Yo, what's up everyone? Kage using Haki, African Tech Ride over here, and today we're going to be discussing a fairly interesting topic. Now, obviously, you read the title and you clicked on the video, so you know exactly what we're going to be covering. We're going to be covering SpaceX in Africa, but South Africa to be more specific. And uh, I'm going to be discussing as to, like, what we should be expecting, if you should get it, whether you should skip it, or you should just get it because it's... It's internet from space! Okay, so without getting very technical, uh, Starlink is basically SpaceX's solution to internet, global internet connectivity actually. So they will be achieving this by launching thousands of satellites in low Earth orbit and uh, obviously they will be trying to provide fast, internet about 50 to 150 megabits per second at 20 to 30 millisecond latency so obviously you're thinking wait space well satellite internet connection at those speeds that's obviously unheard of because if you are currently a user of satellite uh, internet connection you know it is one overpriced and uh, it's obviously slow and the worst part is that you obviously don't have an option. Uh, options such as fiber or broadband, 4G, LTE, whatever, 5G, whatever you want to call it these days. Uh, so as you can see, this is obviously geared towards people who are not, well, currently at least, who are not in urban areas. And uh, so it's usually primarily geared towards individuals that are, I don't know, farm rural areas and uh they obviously don't have internet connection and if they do it's extremely patchy at best so that being said south africans are obviously able to well get their hands on or at least pre-order spacex or starlink's internet from about 99 dollars which equates to about 1400 1500 uh, depending on the current exchange rates, of course. And uh, once you do put the deposit, it will be subtracted from your first monthly payment of $99, of course. Uh, however, that is excluding the $499 that you have to pay upfront for the whole equipment list, which is basically the satellite dish, the internet router, and all the cables that you're going to need for the installation. And of course, if you are every South African, you're thinking, whoa, $499, that's obviously mind-boggling. That's close to like, what, if my calculations are correct, uh, about 7,000 something, 7,500 something. Uh, so that's obviously a steep price to pay. And uh, to top that all off, even if you do pay the deposit, it's not actually a guarantee that you will get the service. So it's more of a first come, first serve basis. But even if you are first, you not guaranteed the service. Uh, pretty weird. I don't know what Starlink's doing over there. However, uh, the product will be available obviously for testing and uh, as a consumer use rather. So obviously taking into consideration that you have to pay an upfront fee of $4.99 which is about $7,000 something and a monthly cost of $99 which is going to be like $1,400, $1,500 every month. You obviously going to be thinking that yo this is very expensive and there's obviously a wide array of options that you have especially if you are in an urban center i'm talking joburg pretoria cape town durban those 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 areas uh, but one thing that we have to consider is that spacex at least well starlink at least currently they're not pivoting this primarily to us as i stated before this is primarily for individuals who are underserviced individuals that don't have access to the internet or they do have access to internet. However, it's very, very patchy. And uh, as, a, as a matter of fact, they pretty much getting ripped off. So you would find companies that say charging 150 Rand for one gigs of data. However, it's not optimal coverage. And uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys that will be watching this video who are interested in this is obviously one of those individuals that are obviously under serviced. And the best value proposition of this is that it's, yes, it's $99. However, it is 
uncapped internet. So you will be getting close to about fiber speeds, which is optimal fiber speeds at least, 100 megabits per second. Um, however, there is a catch to all of this fast speed satellite internet from space is that in itself, it is patchy because anything that has to be transmitted over the air basically it's not going to be very resistant to the elements i'm talking rain clouds and all of that nonsense stuff so basically it the satellite dish obviously to communicate with the satellites i'm talking about your ground satellite and in order to communicate with starlinks thousands of satellites that's going to be orbiting earth it needs a clear line of sight and uh, obviously on a rainy day cloudy day or thunderstorms you are going to get a hell of a ride <laughs> to put it quite frankly so it's obviously still not as stable as adsl 4g 4g i don't know i don't know if it's going to be as stable as 4g maybe you guys can correct me on that but i don't think it's going to be as stable as 4g simply because that the internet is still new and there's still a lot of development going into that so you could still give it a shot if it's up to it i mean if you are up to it with all of that being said uh the network quality of starlink is obviously improving at a hell of a rate uh due to obviously spacex constantly launching new satellites new satellites like there's a whole lot of satellites being launched about like a couple tens tens of if not hundreds uh by the time of this of this video of course so the network quality will be linked or will correlate to how many satellites are in orbit and obviously how many people are using the internet so obviously right now the speed tests and the reviews that we are getting are obviously promising as uh, all of the reviews that I watched, they are obviously getting way more than 50 megabits per second uh, down and up. So even able to watch 4G videos and so on. However, one thing that we do have to take note of is that there's not a lot of people use the network right now. So the network isn't under strain by any means, obviously because there's not a lot of people that don't have access period to the internet in the global or at least developed markets. However, in Africa, it is going to be different as internet, internet penetration is not as high as developed worlds such as, you know, the Western society and like, what's this? Eastern, East Asia. <laughs> Slip my mind over there. So obviously internet access over here is not as rampant and um, prices are high, not very reliable. So in my opinion, I do think that Starlink does have a lot of money to make over here a lot of money but speaking about a lot of money it does cost a lot of money for an african uh, obviously pay is less exchange rates they are going to hit us all the time so in my opinion i do believe that spacex will obviously have to do some sort of price configurations with regards to local uh economies uh, because like paying with let's say the zim dollar like it's like exchanging it's going to be very volatile one month you'll be paying x amount for your internet the next month you'll be paying so much and that is obviously due to political instability economic instability and uh which brings me on to south africa's biggest problem if i must be honest will be how regulators respond to spacex obviously they will have to be regulated as uh, you cannot function in a country without regulation or paying taxes and so on and so forth. However, the problem with South Africa particularly is that there is a lot of bureaucracy and uh, that will obviously might slow down the process of, you know, rolling out the internet as fast as Starlink would have wanted to. So, however, there is progress. There is progress. Uh, the independent communications authority of south africa i hope i said that correctly please correct me if i'm wrong um they are in talks with starlink and they obviously will be uh, dishing out your spectrum 
to Starlink, well, the radio frequencies that they'll need to use in order to provide the service to their customers. And uh, not just that, they're obviously uh, auctioning out a lot of the frequencies to local, uh, what do you call this now? Telecommunication providers uh, with regards to 5G and so on and so forth. So it does seem that there is progress with regards to the bureaucracy. However, it is still there. It's still rampant, still rampant. Hence the patchy internet connection in the country at large. So as great as Starlink is, they obviously do face local competition, even if the competition don't really exist. Uh, you do have, let's just say, you do have Yarclick. Yarclick apparently provides 20 megabit per second satellite connectivity to rural areas in the country. However, that does cost 1,600 Rand, which equates to about $120 for the American viewers or for people who are not familiar with the Rand. That is obviously a ripoff, like 1,600 for such slow internet speeds. I mean, people who pay that are obviously in desperate need and they don't have any other choice, which is why Starlink is here for the rescue. However, individuals in cities, again, I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't advise getting Starlink right now at least because we do have better options such as AfriHost, uh, supersonic they do provide cheaper internet cheaper fiber internet it's more reliable and uh, it's not patchy at all so and you would get relatively the same speeds uh, 100 up 100 down so if you are in an area that has fiber option i would hold off getting starlink as it's right now at least it's not the best option it's not the cheapest option so unless you really just want to be part of Elon Musk's bandwagon and like, you know, I understand, I, I understand the facade. However, if you're looking at this from a pure economic perspective and not from a fanboy's perspective, getting Starlink while you're in the suburbs, at least, and you have fiber, is going to be a waste of money. And I would advise that you don't get it right now. At least wait for, I don't know, a couple of years until they have all of their satellites sorted out internet sorted out latency sorted out especially if you are a gamer because latency gaming from space is not going to be very easy but obviously Elon Musk and his team Starlink they are obviously working around that and uh, considering that it is from space it is very good latency it's just not the best latency and that is African Tech Rads 2 5 10, 10 rand, 10 rand on that. That's my word of advice. Those have been my thoughts. If you guys obviously enjoyed the video, we would obviously appreciate it if you would, you know, smash that like button and uh, don't forget to subscribe as we do notice that most of our viewers are not actually subscribed. So it would obviously help us get to you the content that you're already watching. So hit that subscribe button, like, leave us a comment. What are your thoughts? How would South Africa handle Starlink, too much bureaucracy, is it a good change, is it a bad change, will it flop, will people adopt, I don't know, let us know, I give you my opinion, give me yours, Kaga using Haki, African Tech Rat.